Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, my production partner, Michael Merrick, this side of the camera this week. Good to see you again, Mike. Let's talk about what's on the rest of the show, if that works for you. Mm, sounds great. All right, Craig and Stacey Schrader are going to join us after Michael uh, and I talk about the Hawkeyes. Craig and Stacey Schrader from Fight With Flash Foundation, as you know, via Facebook or fightwithflash.org. So much good news coming from those two, as always. And then after Craig and Stacey, we'll close out the show, as we do now each week, with Scott Pritchard. Scotty P. from Vegas, our Northeast Iowa native, been in Vegas for 30-plus years, crushing it in the sports betting world. Pritchardspicks.com. Can't wait for that. Michael, let's do it again. Great seeing you. How are you doing? Doing great, Dave. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you. Always good to see you on this side of the camera because you are eyes and ears on campuses. Folks, you know Michael is the sports director for both the student-run KRUI radio station but also the daily Iowa television station, sports, and the sports director on both of those. You're at the pressers, or if you're not there, you're culling through the video and the interviews. Gee, what could we talk about this week, Michael? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> BF and KF, <laughs> Brian Ferentz, Kirk Ferentz, Beth Getz. Uh, the saga continues, but only for a shortened time. Brian Ferentz has been notified, and we've all been notified, that he will not be back next year. And uh, I thought Beth's get, Beth Getz handled that well, the interim AD. I thought Kirk Ferentz's comments were very telling yesterday as we record this on Wednesday afternoon, November 1st. I've done all the lead up for you. Take it from here and you. Yeah, uh, you mentioned it. A lot to talk about with all the sports. The October, November time, always just the best time for sports. Truly. You get to mix everything. You're closing with some World Series, you're getting some football, some basketball, but. Big news here at the University of Iowa right now. You talked about it. Brian Ferentz is out after the 2023 season. So that means there will be a new offensive coordinator for Iowa following this bowl game this upcoming year. So four regular season games left for BF. Maybe a Big Ten championship game. A lot of Hawkeye fans are hoping for that. Yeah. Um, except the weird ones that aren't hoping for that. Uh, but nonetheless, and then a bowl game, of yeah. course, which Iowa is already eligible for. And you talked about Kirk Ferentz's statements, and they were pretty telling. It was was fairly clear to a lot of people and now I might be reading between the lines here but Kirk kind of seemed a little agitated that this happened yeah. at the timing that it did um, when the statement came out that it was during the season he multiple times throughout the press conference brought up how in his 24 25 30 years coaching and everything everything has been done evaluation wise postseason and this coming in during the middle of the season yeah. um, was a big potential distraction to him and his team but they have, you know, they do what Iowa does. They're focused on Northwestern. Northwestern is the biggest thing in the world right now. You know, getting to play in Wrigley Field, that'll be great for them. But this is obviously some really breaking stuff. Um, and, you know, being a student at the University of Iowa, you can only imagine how many people are armchair quarterbacking oh, yeah. to me about wanting Brian Ferentz out of there. And that's pretty much since I've been a student here that they yeah. uh, I'm a senior now and they've been you know chirping about the offense for a while all the other students so you know Beth gets that's a way to win the PR very quickly yeah. I would say this way is to get rid of who's been public enemy number one let's just you Truly. know cut through all of it that yeah. is what's been happening you don't really see other schools when their offense has to punt you don't hear them then start chanting to fire the offensive coordinator right that's a rare thing and yeah. you know that's just something that now has become accustomed to Iowa fans you know yeah. they're booing their own team it's like we're in Philadelphia or something like yeah. the Iowa nice leaves when the points don't start coming and we've definitely seen that so far yeah. um, and I think Beth Getz has handled this situation really well um, putting out the statement having the conversations that she has had, and then talking to the media afterwards. She's staying true to who she is, and I think that Beth Getz is already off to a great start. You know, there's not many times that an athletic director has to do something that might upset a guaranteed Hall of Fame head coach, someone who's been there for over 30 years, if you include their entire time at the university. Yep. You know, this is something... That Beth did, though, to seem to me, give a light at the end of this tunnel for the end of this season because after losing that game, and we can talk refs all you want, but the point is there were 10 points scored by Iowa in that game. The yep. point is that there has been four times now in the past two seasons minimum that Iowa has reached the lowest over-under in college football history. And and that all comes back to one thing. That is the Ferences and the, and the head coach and the offensive coordinator. So with this, you know, that gives Iowa... Iowa donors, that gives Iowa fans, that gives, you know, even potential recruits. Recruits, that's where I was going, yes. The, the 
light at the end of the tunnel that things will change or might change next season for the better. It's crazy how this has played out, Michael. So uh, buckle up, I guess, as we say. But let's get to some real exciting stuff mm -hmm. that you have called games for Iowa Hawkeye women's basketball for Big Ten Network or Big Ten Plus. As well. But before we get to Bluters Bunch and men's basketball, you've called some games for field hockey and also for soccer. I'll tell you what, the women are getting it done in soccer and field hockey. Let's talk about that before we talk about basketball. Please. Yeah, so the soccer team, they just got a very big win over Michigan State, the number one ranked team in the Big Ten, I believe top 15 in the entire country, so that was a massive win for them. Now they'll be taking on Penn State here Thursday, November 2nd, so that'll be a big game. Everyone watching will know the result. We don't know right now, yeah. but it'll be a very important one. Those two teams drew last year when they played, so anything's possible again. I mean, if you look back at that 2020 tournament that Hawkeye team had I believe one Big Ten win the entire season yeah. before going on and winning the entire Big Ten tournament and then even getting an NCAA tournament win and then you talk about field hockey they got a big win on senior day the home finale against Rutgers they'll also have a game on November 2nd so you'll know the result of that as yeah. well they're up in Ann Arbor for the Big Ten tournament Everyone in the Big Ten is a shot to win that championship, but Northwestern is definitely the favorite right now, and that's Iowa's biggest rival for sure. You think about this, Michael, and we were talking about this off the air. Let's bring it on the air. The Hawkeye women in field hockey were ranked like sixth or seventh a week ago, and they're still going to be in the top mm -hmm. ten, but they're fourth in the Big Ten because there's like four teams in the Big Ten that are top six or seven. Mm -hmm. So it's this Big Ten tournament, as you mentioned, is going to be wild. Uh, one thing I wanted to have you go back to before you start with Bluter's Bunch, talk about that. You were there. Mitch Vick and I brought it up last week. Neither one of us were there in-house. You were. Talk about that. Was it as great as we saw on the Big Ten Network on TV? I mean, that rivaled against NFL games on Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon. They still had 55,646 in-house. Talk about that, please. Yeah, no, the crossover at Koenig event, I mean, that's probably, I'll never be a part of anything like that again in my life. I mean, I hope I am. That was just such a wonderful event. It was so special. Um, I got to walk on the field. I didn't get to touch the court, sadly, <laughs> but got to walk on the field before the game and just kind of feeling that atmosphere. It was different than a Kinnick Saturday. Um, on that Sunday, there was just a, another energy in there, a lot of families in the crowd, and I just think that that game not only did a lot for the moment right now, but for the future yeah. of Iowa sports, Iowa women's sports, and women's sports as a total. There's so many little boys, little girls watching that event and yep. being like, I can do that. I want to play in Kinnick Stadium, you know? And there's a little girl saying that that, that never would have happened. For Kaitlin Clark, she said it herself, like, she couldn't imagine have been played inside of Kinnick Stadium growing up here in the state of Iowa. And that's a possibility now. And that's what the University of Iowa has done. We've brought up the women's wrestling program. Um, Iowa is a, is a staple. It's a beacon for women's sports yes. in this country. It's not just the women's basketball program, which is obviously about to have its most anticipated, most watched season ever. Every game, they're, I, they're probably going to have less open seats at games than any other team ever. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty much sold out anytime they're announced to be somewhere. So it, it's just it's just wonderful to see, wonderful to be a part of. I was really blessed to be a part of that day, commentate that game. It was just such a great experience. This is why, see, Michael's got the perspective. He's at those games, calling those games. Uh, inside perspective, same with the men's game. A lot of times you'll be, if not calling from Big Ten Plus, uh, the preseason games or the uh, – yeah, pre-conference pre games. You are definitely calling for radio. So take us inside to uh, Fran McCaffrey's guys. Uh, looked okay against Quincy University that night, Division II school, uh, the Great Lakes Valley Conference, along with our friend Jeff Horner from Truman State. They're of that ilk. Uh, got down a little bit early, surprisingly, to say that this is a year of transition. But, Michael, there is Patrick McCaffrey. There, ben Cricky, the, the uh, Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year last year, coming in. Can score, we know this. Uh, so let's talk about that. Peyton Sanford is definitely taking a lead in this. Tony Perkins back. Josh Dix. There's some young guys with some experience. And, oh, by the way, Peyton's little brother Price, what did he go, four for five from three mm -hmm. the other night? Looks like uh, he's carrying on the Sanford name that he can shoot the ball a little bit. Yeah, no, it definitely seems like Iowa, they've brought in a lot of new players. I mean, they lost half of last year's yeah. roster, which, you know, would be a, a cause for concern for a lot of schools. But Iowa, you know, 
religiously talks about reloading, not rebuilding. And that's what they think they've done this season. Um, getting Cricky from Valpo, you know, he led the Missouri Valley Conference, like you mentioned. He looked solid against Quincy University there. Yep. He's second in scoring. But right now, it's really just getting people to gel on the court. I think that the freshmen, they looked pretty well out there on the court together. Um, Freeman and Dembele really showed like they can give some depth yes. to this front court, which I think they really need. Freeman ran the court really well for being a six foot ten ish guy. You know, Dembele has looked like an athletic freak already. He had two huge blocks in yes. that game against Quincy. You talked about Sanford going four for five from three. I think he's got a quick trigger, just as fast as his brother, if not even a little quicker yeah, from release. Yeah. And then Brock Harding to really do a lot scoring wise, but he did lead the team in assists with four assists. I think he's the real true point guard on this roster. It seems like even DeSante Bowen, who is a point guard, he's a bucket getter. I mean, yeah. that's who DeSante Bowen is. But Brock Harding really gives me that, like, young Jordan Bohannon vibes. Or if we want to go outside of this conference, gives me Colin Gillespie vibes of oh, yeah. Villanova. Yeah. Um, Big East Player of the Year, yep. even. Michael, my friend, thanks so much as always. Thank you, Dave. Truly my pleasure. Folks, there he is, from that side of the camera to this side of the camera. And we get him over here as much as we can because you hear the insights right there. He is on campus at practices, at games, got it all covered wall to wall. Sports director for KRUI, student run radio, and sports director for the Daily Iowa Television Network, my buddy and production partner, Michael Merrick. So for Michael Merrick, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. We'll be back with more and Craig and Stacey Schrader with Fight with Flash Foundation. And then we'll close out the show with Scott Pritchard, Pritchardspicks.com. Scotty P, Northeast Iowa native, doing great in the sports betting world in Vegas for 30 plus years. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. To have a strong finish, you need an excellent start. It's true on the track and also in the field. That's why Mershman Seeds works tirelessly to deliver cutting edge technology year after year. Introducing Starting Line, Mershman Seeds' latest advancement in seed treatment. Now providing added protection from white mold and sudden death syndrome all season. Ask for Starting Line Seed Treatment from Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There's our friends, Craig and Stacy Schrader. My goodness, your schedule, my schedule, our recording <laughs> schedule, we've been all over. It's great to see you two all ready to rock and roll in another successful year into Fight with Flash Foundation via yes. Facebook or fightwithflash.org. Great seeing you guys again. How's everything going? Yes, great. It's awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you. So guys, let's start here. Stacey, I'm going to have you talk about Okay. Dance marathons upcoming, garage sales. Craig is going to get us up to date on the online auction for the bourbon auction. Mm -hmm. Great things happening. I say it often and I'm going to say it again. Fight with Flash Foundation via Facebook or fightwithflash.org. So, Stace, uh, yeah. as you're ready to rock and roll, get us into what's happening with dance marathons yes. and garage sales, please. Yes. So, right now, this is the time of year where we actually um, start um, going to the little, the little morale captains, um, little small groups of the, the dance marathons uh, across like you and I, Iowa State, Iowa, and we get to speak to them and share more of our story mm -hmm. to the small group. And then in, after the first of the year, we go to the big main events, so which we look forward to always. Um, and then at the, yeah, in December, usually beginning of December, we end up having our end of year fun flash garage sale um, with a 22% discount usually on stuff. So that's Makes kind of sense. fun. <laughs> yes. And then of course, towards the end of December, we always have our fun, fun, fun time where we get to take our big check to our, for our fundraising from the whole year to the the Children's Hospital at the AYA Cancer Program. There. And I love the fact it's not just a big check, one of those promo checks. It is a large check, usually in the 22 significant, obviously, Flash's favorite number. Uh, Patrick McCaffrey still wearing yes. that to this day. Patrick and, and Flash went through their struggles together with mm -hmm. cancer. And, you know, Stacy and Craig, I'll, b I'll bring you both in here. How great is it not only to see the wave, and again, you're given the big mm -hmm. check, literally, figuratively, and actually, to the AYA or the Stead Family Children's Hospital at the University of Iowa, but how great is that not only to see it for the football games, mm -hmm. but then 55,000 plus packed into Kinnick for the crossover yeah. classic or crossover at Kinnick with Caitlin Clark and Bluters Bunch. So Everybody exciting. stopped to wave between the first and second no. quarter of women's basketball. Awesome. So that, of course, has to make you guys, as you are both mm -hmm. smiling with me too, sure. the energy that this has created and what you guys have been a part of. And I say it often to you guys because you put it in my head initially, Flash's wishes truly were. Mm -hmm. 
make things better for other kids. And yep. Craig, I remember you telling me and Stacy as well when Flash was going through this uh, and before he had passed, unfortunately. And you both said that he just said, "Boy, this isn't fair." And you both said, "Yeah, I know. It's it's stinks okay. for you, and it's going to get better." He's like, "No." I'm not talking about me. I want it for the other kids. And yeah. that just, I, I know yeah. we haven't visited in a while, and I want to reiterate that to the viewing public who, yeah. if you aren't familiar with the story, do yourself a favor, facebook.com uh, and then slash Fight with Flash Foundation or fightwithflash.org. So, Stacy, yeah. great stuff as yeah. always from you. And then yes. Garage Sale you mentioned as well. Yep. You got the Coming earrings up. on, of course, as always. So, yep. all that will be listed online. Mm -hmm. So, Craig, let's get to it. Stacy always does the drum roll so well. Uh, yeah. With uh, the online bourbon auction, I'm guessing another successful year. It's been big the first two years. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. It's been, uh, it was it was a great four days, and we're so appreciative of everybody that uh, donated bottles, all the people that donate money, try to win bourbon, but majority of the people on there really don't care if they win. Right. It's their way of making a difference for other people. A lot of these people might have been connected with somebody that uh, might have lost somebody due to cancer, but they're not, don't have a foundation necessarily mm -hmm. for their person, or they don't have one themselves. So it's a way for them to get involved with other people that do have foundations and still make a difference. Um, and I know when I do, I donate to a lot of other ones. Yeah. Um, Stacey, you don't need to listen. Um, <laughs> the other ones I try to go on and donate as well and to help those causes because they all are important. And, yeah. and they all, all the money makes a difference. So for our event that ended... Um, we ended up uh, raising forty thousand dollars in those yeah. four days. Yes. My goodness, ten k a day on the average. And <laughs> right. That's, and now you guys are going into year nine, right? Or it's yep. been eight years, unfortunately, since Flash had passed. So we're approaching that seven figure. I don't want to get crazy with the numbers yet, but you guys are really rolling it up. I'm going to mention it again repeatedly. Go to facebook.com slash fightwithflashfoundation or fightwithflash.org because what I love about your golf tournament, and if you go back and look at past years of pictures or videos, your sponsors are coming back and they're bringing other sponsors with them. So that community that we talk about, mm -hmm. Everybody's taking ownership in this because, unfortunately, to both your points, it touches a lot of our lives, unfortunately. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. Craig, Stacy, thank you. So, for the Fight with Flash Foundation via Facebook or fightwithflash.org, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. We'll be back with Scott Pritchard to close out the show. Scotty P. from Northeast Iowa, now in Vegas, doing big things in the sports betting world. We'll be back with more to close out Hawkeye in just a few moments. Who do you trust to produce the best deal? A seat company that's chasing technology? or a seat company that's writing a book on it. Mersman Seeds is a leader in technology. We're independent and family owned. Our sister company, MS Technologies, provides access to world-class traits and genetics. And our starting line seed treatment is second to none. Who can you trust with your yields? Mersman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There's our buddy, Scotty P. Scott Pritchard, pritchardspicks.com. Scott Pritchard, a Northeast Iowa native, and I've been crushing it in Vegas in the sports betting world for the last 30 plus years. Scotty P, as always, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Dave, but enough about me. How are you? I'm doing great as well. And you know, less of me and more of you is always a good thing, especially when it comes to making money on this show, my man. You are crushing it again, and I want to highlight these numbers. 76 and 51 for Scott's free picks. If Again, if you go to PritchardsPicks.com. And the reason I mention that is, as Scott has, has told me many times off the air, and I want to bring it on the air, you take a look at that 60% winning percentage, and as Scott always says, and I'm, I'm a good student of whatever this man says, not all numbers are created equal, and so let's uh, let's talk about that and the over under this week as we record this on Wednesday afternoon, November first, the Iowa Hawkeyes game in Chicago at Wrigley Field against Northwestern, but it opened at twenty nine and a half for the total or the over under. Both teams combined score, and the Hawks went from a six and a half point favorite. They are now down to a five point favorite again, depending what sports book or line you go by. But talk a little bit about the movement of those numbers, Scott, and I don't want to make too many puns or jokes about the over-unders and lack of offense for Iowa and Brian Ferentz. Enough has been said about that. But let's you and I talk about the movement of these numbers, please, my friend. What's interesting is when it comes to betting sports at any level, oftentimes points mean more than opinions. In this case, the 
you did mention that there's been a couple of moves on this game, the side and the total regarding Iowa taking on Northwestern. Home team dogs generally long term seem to be a pretty good bet. Northwestern, even though it's uh, going to be uh, in Chicago, Wrigley Field, I, I think you mentioned here. The Northwestern Wildcats, the fact that the game opened six and a half and bet down to five proves my point that home team dogs almost always long term are a good, solid bet. Never uh, apologize for taking a home team dog plus the point. So the fact that the early money anyway, a, lo- a lot can happen between now and kickoff, but the fact that the early money has come in on the dog. It's a live dog, a value play. In regards to Iowa, their lack of offense and lack of creativity on offense, they have a very good defense, but the total reflects the fact that this team cannot score. They're inept on offense. They play really good, sound defense. And I can remember a bowl game a year ago, the total, I believe, was 32, and that was an easy under to the point where people in Vegas tend to call me the undertaker simply because I generally lean. I don't go into a handicapping sports saying I'm going to proactively go with the unders, but more times than not, I'm taking the points. More times than not, I'm betting the under. And in this case, you know, the total floating around between 29, 29 and a half, 30, 30 and a half. But this is not all that new simply because Iowa just a couple, three weeks ago, taking on Minnesota. I remember the total open 32 was bet down to 30, 29 and a half. It fell uh, 22 points at 12 to 10 as Iowa got hosed late in that game. But even if that punt return for a touchdown late stood up, they still would have uh, cashed on the under. Yeah, and you're exactly right. In that last last year's bowl game, as you mentioned, was a 21 nothing Hawkeye victory over Kentucky. And uh, you know, so I'd be happy if uh, if Iowa doesn't win by more than five. If they win by a field goal, or in Iowa's case, maybe even a safety. We know punting is winning, defense is winning at Iowa, and great stuff, Scott. And thank you for that. So let's get to a viewer question from Susan in Des Moines. I love the representation of our female viewership here, Scott. And she, again, to your law of numbers and your averages, again, Pritchardspicks.com, Scotty P, Scott Pritchard, our friend from Northeast Iowa native, but been in Las Vegas for the last 30 plus years, doing extraordinarily well in the sports betting business, 30 plus years. So Scott, Susan's question is, if I don't go with Scott all the time, and we mentioned your gaudy, fantastic numbers on your free picks of 76 and 51, that's a 60% winning clip. And again, was, as we know, you got to go 52.4% just to break even after paying the juice, the big, the tax. Uh, so Scott is way, way above that. But to Susan's question, Scott, I need to pick a system or a person because if I only pick Scott sporadically, let's hypothetically say you could pick you on a couple of your 76 wins, but you could also go on a streak of where it's the 51 losses, the aggregate. You may hit you three or four different times where it's a loss, 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 loss. Her question is, I've got to pick a system or a person and go with it. Correct, Scott? Well, actually, that's pretty insightful from Susan's standpoint. I do appreciate the fact that we've got some female viewers because respectfully, my analytics, my audience is about 97% men. But to her point, keep in mind, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And I equate it to, Dave, that you don't try and proactively time the stock market. Either you're in for the long term or you are guessing and it's impossible to time the market. I, But to her point, you know, I can tell you that on TikTok and the social media platforms that I post videos on a daily basis, that's where I, I'm documented at 76 and 51 versus the number that, you know, I've had a couple of uh, people that tune in and say, gosh, you know, every time I follow you, I lose. And it's like, dude, if you cannot make money with a record, a free pick record versus the number of 76 and 51, you should not be betting, period. Fantastic. See, we uh, all of us folks here, you're an Iowa native, all of our viewers, smart, smart people. I, we know that already, Scott, going in. I knew you'd agree with me on that. But my friend, the time goes so quickly here. I look forward to catching up with you next week. Your nuggets of uh, of uh, wisdom are fantastic. I want to take this opportunity. I usually do it at the beginning and end of the segment, but we got so caught up with you. You're still doing very well in the Circa, the Invitational Top 16 betters uh, in in anywhere around, and and Scotty P is doing very well. I believe is still in second place at the Circa, the world's largest and best sports book, and you're also crushing it in the Golden Nugget Contest. You got to update us on both of those, please, Scotty. 
Yeah, real quick, the world's largest, the world's best sports book, Circa, in conjunction with uh, Vison Vegas Sports Information Network TV station here in Las Vegas, they are doing the world championship of sports betting by invite only called the Circa Invitational, 16 of the world's best going head to head for the infamous green jacket and 25,000 in cash. They give cash back to the top three. I was, I've been locked and loaded in second place, floating in and out of first, but Kenny White, who is a personal friend, he's the real deal, been an icon in Vegas for four plus decades. He went six and one against the number, which is really hard to do. I'm locked and loaded in second place, but he's created some distance between he and I at this point. Scotty P, great seeing you as always. Pritchard picks pritchardspicks.com i repeat it again pritchardspicks.com scott pritchard scotty p i look forward to seeing you next week and thanks so much again as always my friend it was an honor thanks again dave have a good week my friend you do, you do the same and the, likewise for me to you for scott pritchard craig and stacy schrader my production partner michael merrick and to you the viewers i'm dave o'hara with hawkeye that's all for me thanks to all of you and as always thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.